Today, a new patch dropped in Elden Ring that has a massive list of changes, and we already have a video on the channel going over a lot of the other changes, but in this one, we wanted to highlight some of the biggest changes for incantations and sorceries that you need to know about that are going to change your build, particularly for faith builds, but also for intelligence builds in this video here. So if you find it helpful, make sure to drop a like down below and subscribe for all the other Elden Ring videos on the channel. And of course, put in the comments down below if there was any particular things that we might have missed in this video and we'll all learn together as a community. The first thing you have to know is that the changes reflected in this patch will only affect your current save game if you either do a level up, activate Godric's Great Rune, or re-equipped any equipment that includes talismans and armor which grant you stat bonuses. If you don't do this, the changes made in the patch will not apply to your spells, so make sure to do this first so that you are getting the new changes. And for new characters created after this update, they don't have to do this, it will already be set to this latest patch. Let's start off by talking about incantations because they got massive casting speed increases across the board as well as decreased recovery times, which means they're not only casting faster but you're recovering quicker, which just overall makes them just straight up better. And remember, one of the biggest community feedback points for incantations was that they had this huge casting time, they were easily interruptible and they often didn't do enough damage output to sort of make it worth it. Well now they're casting quicker, recovering faster, some of them even have decreased FP costs and many of the longer casting time incantations also have added poise or hyper armor meaning you're less likely to be flinched out of them which is massive for faith builds. So let's highlight some specific ones that I think are worth sort of mentioning, but again, if I do miss any, let me know in the comments and we'll all learn together. I'm going to start off with Lightning Strike and Honed Bolt. These were already two very efficient, very strong incantations, and now they're just even better. Lightning Bolt has decreased stamina cost, increased casting speed, and decreased recovery time, while Honed Bolt has increased casting speed and decreased recovery time. These were two very efficient, staple incantations for many faith builds, and now they're just slightly better. There's also basically all of the Ancient Dragon Lightning abilities, the Dragon Cult spells, the Ancient Dragon's Lightning Spear with decreased FP cost and stamina cost, increased casting speed, decreased recovery time, and the all-important poise increase that allows casters to more easily withstand enemy attacks while casting. But it doesn't just apply to the Ancient Dragon's Lightning Spear, it also applies to the Landsax's Glaive, Fortisax's Lightning Spear, and the Frozen Lightning Spear. They were all already decent and very visually cool incantations, but they had those drawbacks of the cast speed and being easily interruptible, and now they're just slightly better on those fronts. And of course, the Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike, also a very strong one already, particularly good. We already have a video on the channel showing a really powerful build for that, but it does now have decreased recovery time, which just makes it even better. I want to also highlight the Death Lightning skill, having a decreased FP cost and an increased duration of the death accumulating smoke. This is a sort of hit or miss sort of skill. Sometimes it does huge damage, sometimes it does basically nothing, but it's a very strong skill regardless, and now it's just been basically buffed. I didn't know whether to mention this one or not because by reading the patch notes, the Scarlet Aeonia skill from Melania, one of the coolest ones in the game, made it sound like it would be absolutely incredible now with an increased cast speed, decreased recovery time, and that poise allowing you to withstand enemy attacks while casting. But from my own testing, it didn't feel like an absolutely game-changing difference. It still felt kind of lackluster, and it was still interruptible by bigger enemies. So I wasn't too impressed by this, but I like to see that they did at least buff it. They also buffed Grail's Roar, which decreased the FP cost, stamina cost, and the recovery time. So again, an already powerful incantation, now even more powerful. I'm going to quickly go over some of the downward adjustments. The Swarm of Flies has decreased blood loss buildup, the Flame of Frenzy has decreased madness buildup, and the Frenzied Burst has decreased madness buildup, so a couple nerfs of note there. Moving on to sorceries, it's a somewhat similar situation to the incantations, with across the board casting speed increases and decreased recovery times, meaning that the spells are just slightly faster and quicker to recover from, and there's one particular spell that also got the increased poise, making it easier to withstand enemy attacks, and we'll start off with the gavel of Hymer. This one's a really cool one, it already does good damage and good poise damage and it's a decent looking spell 
but now with that increased cast time, decreased recovery, and the added poise, it's just even better. Both of the moon sorceries, the full and dark moon for Renala and Rani, have got increased cast speed and decreased recovery time. They were long casting spells, often openers for boss fights for the debuff that they apply, so these are now just marginally better. The carrying greatsword got increased casting speed at lower dexterity, which is a really nice change because it was quite slow to cast and now it's just a bit better. The Great Ocular Bubble I've chosen to highlight because this spell actually did good damage, it was just a decently long casting speed and slow travel time, but with an increased cast speed and decreased recovery time, it's just a bit better so I thought I'd include it. The next two, the Briars of Sin and the Briars of Punishment, both have decreased recovery time, but both also have increased blood loss buildup on enemies, which is really cool because these spells I feel like were slightly undertuned before, so maybe now arcane hybrid builds using Briars of Sin or Briars of Punishment might be even more viable for that crazy bleed buildup. And there's one downwards adjustment that's worth mentioning. Agida's Moonblade, my personal all-time favorite sorcery, has been slightly nerfed to decrease the power of a single cast, but to improve the performance so that the blade and frost hits more consistently and continuously. It also has an increased casting speed at lower dexterity, similar to the Carrion Greatsword buff. So overall, it's had a bit of a buff, a bit of a nerf, but overall feels slightly nerfed to me. The problem is because Frostbite has also been nerfed as a status in of itself to not cause that same stagger effect, as well as of course the nerf to Agila Moonblade itself, it does feel like it deals a lot less damage, a lot less frostbite buildup, and just overall isn't as good anymore as it used to be. Again, if there's anything else that you think should be highlighted for the sorceries or incantations in this patch, please let us know in the comments down below. Of course, put a like and subscribe down below if you did enjoy this, and we have lots more Elden Ring content already on the channel for you guys, and the videos on screen right now we think you will really enjoy, so definitely check them out and don't miss it out and drop a like down below. Thank you for watching guys and we'll see you next time.